Hi everybody and thank you for joining me in this short video presentation regarding the first ECG in the new section of my website, the ECG exercises. In this section, I will try to introduce every week one simple but interesting ECG. We will discuss together the findings and also the final interpretation of the ECG. I'm looking forward to receiving your comments and feedbacks regarding the ECGs and the section and I hope you will join me in my future video presentations. Thank you. What we see in this ECG is a small QRS complex tachycardia, a supraventricular tachycardia with a cycle length of 440 milliseconds. We see a one-to-one -one correlation between P and QRS, and we have a long RP short PR tachycardia. The differential diagnosis in such cases are clear. When we have a one-to-one -one conduction, so it's difficult to differentiate between atrial tachycardia and other causes of long RP short PR or tachycardia like accessory pathway or atypical AVNRT. Now the question is which electrocardiographic criteria we can use to differentiate between atrial tachycardia and other diagnosis in case of one-to-one -one correlation between P and QRS. This is an interesting study which showed that we can use actually three ECG findings to differentiate between atrial tachycardia and other diagnosis of lung RP short PR tachycardia. The first criteria is RP to PR ratio equal or more than 1.65. Absence of negative P waves in inferior leads is the second criteria and a P wave duration equal or more than 96 millisecond is the third criteria. And as in our patient, if we have the criteria number one and three together, we have a sensitivity of around 57% and a specificity of 100% and a positive predictive value of 100%. So we can use this simple ECG criteria to differentiate atrial tachycardia and other differential diagnoses in case of one-to-one -one conduction. Our patient had an atrial tachycardia. Now the second question is, where was the location of the atrial tachycardia? And now we look at the second study which tried to answer the question of localization of atrial tachycardia. The authors in this study constructed an algorithm based on P wave morphology from 130 atrial tachycardias. The accuracy of the algorithm is around 93%. When we look closer to our ECG, we see that the P wave polarity in lead V1 is isoelectric. And when we go back to the algorithm, we see that this is a sign for the location of the atrial tachycardia very close to AV node and his on the right side of the septum. So this is the location of the atrial tachycardia based on this algorithm and actually the ECG belongs to a patient with atrial tachycardia which was successfully ablated very close to his bundle from right side of the septum. Once again, thank you for joining me in this video presentation. I hope to having your feedbacks here and I invite you to join me in my future video presentations.